Skadoosh! <laughs> you probably missed it when I actually skipped one. I can't do it under pressure. It's just gotta be natural. Oh, natural. I don't really do too well under pressure. I bet you can. You can. I don't even know if this is a good one. Let's see it. It's a little light. I'd say that you can get at least at least three skips out of that one. To have the chance to film an abandoned lighthouse is an opportunity that very few people will ever get. And it was our chance as parents to give our kids something that they would remember for the rest of their lives. What we learned about this omnia structure that sits vacant two and a half miles off the shores of Michigan and out into Lake Huron turned out to be more than just facts and history. You see, it is times like this that we can walk through the days of old and not just hear about how things used to be, but actually touch it, to experience it. Wow. This was this was the cook's bedroom. He was the most important guy on here, obviously. So he has he was the only one that had the privacy. This we found. We found an old whiskey bottle way back in there. Oh. So clearly they had not much else to do. But he wow. had a, we have all the doors. Uh, we're now getting the rest of the trim all replaced. This is all the original trim, but because the windows were gone, all the sills were all completely destroyed. So we're, wow. we're doing those. And the wives would bring whatever pink color they had. You can see yeah. yellow, blue, gray. Yeah. No pinks, if I can see. <laughs> <laughs> no pink. This was this was the low man on the ball. He was the youngest guy at the lowest, um, uh, I guess, lowest level. He had no privacy. He had no closet, and everybody had to walk through his room. You guys ever heard of what a Murphy bed is? You know what yeah. that? That's all he had. His Murphy bed was just folded up here. <laughs> wow. This one, this guy was the this was the lamp keeper. His job was to make sure the light stayed lit. Was on time. That little box was like a grandfather clock. It's a big pendulum. It went all the way down to the first floor. His job was to reset every 12 hours. So the wow. clock so was floating and still going. It sat on a, on a dish, 35 inches round, full of mercury. It was floating in the mercury. Oh my so you gosh. So mercury went in the abandoned place. Right, right in the water. Yep. Jeez. This experience allowed our kids to see firsthand a lighthouse that was originally built in 1878. However, that original wooden structure eventually burned down and was rebuilt again in 1898 using bricks. They were able to walk through the iron staircases that have stood the test of time, where men would spend months away from their families simply to guide the ships away from a dangerous harbor. But those are just the facts and the history of the lighthouse. We were fortunate enough to spend time with Captain Lou Schillinger on that day. And as he gave us a history lesson, what stood out the most were the stories he shared about his time spent with his dad. Lou and his father have taken on a love and a true dedication to the rebuilding of this lighthouse decades ago. They spent their early years traversing two and a half miles out into the lake on a 14-foot boat. They carried with them a 12-foot ladder to climb straight up the concrete foundation. They spent years in the 1990s working to fix a roof that caved in and all the windows and doors and proceeded to shovel off all the bird droppings that had accumulated in the lighthouse because for decades it sat empty and in disrepair. Today, because of their work, you no longer need a shaky ladder, but can now ascend a 35-foot staircase, which was not even there until Lou and his father built it many years ago. 
2012, they constructed a new dock so that the approach to the lighthouse was safer and easier to navigate. What is truly incredible is how Lou continues to carry the torch passed to him by his father and is committed to work on his passion at the lighthouse with his family and his community. As you watch this entire video today, you will see why this lighthouse made such an impact on us and why it can impact you in the same way. That was a wild experience. It's probably the largest lake that we'll ever be on on a boat. 75 miles across until you even get to another piece of land, he says. That's an hour drive in a car going 75 miles an hour. So to do it in a boat at like 30, 40 miles an hour would take a long time. It was my first experience going to a lighthouse, the boys' first experience going to a lighthouse. What did you guys think? I liked it. Pretty sweet, man. <laughs> I'm just really glad that I didn't fall down those stairs. The poop steps. That was a little scary. <laughs> there were so many birds that used to live there and they had to literally like shovel out bird mess. Man, just those living quarters are so small. It's kind of, I have so much respect for the men and women that used to have to do that back in the day. So what a task. So Lou and his whole entire family have been working on that lighthouse for 35 years. That's a lifelong adventure. They're going to store it and yep. uh, they're going to try to put like a kind of a bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast, out yeah. There so you can stay out there. How fun would that be? That would be lights out. So I don't know how in the world. <laughs> Ah. But uh, <laughs> Lights out at a lighthouse. <laughs> now we're gonna go fart around for a minute. While probably none of us will ever take on the task of restoring a lighthouse, we realized why this could be so important to you. And it was this. What we started to understand is that what we can do is begin to work on the things that are meaningful to us. To share in those passions with the ones that we love. Just like the memories that Lou made with his father season after season fixing the lighthouse, we can find those same things and fix maybe just an old tabletop and make a piece of art with our daughters. We can take our sons fishing with their grandfather. Or we could skip stones on the lake and simply enjoy a sunset while we hear the laughter of our family and the lapping of the waves against the shore. Never rush an artist. You can't rush art. You've always heard those things. What's going on behind me right now are two full-on artisans trying to figure out how it is that they should comprise this desktop. We know we're gonna put the state of Michigan on it. We know there's gonna be some kind of girl and an umbrella, but we're trying to figure out exactly the layout of this. Well, I'll let you guys see what's going on. I think here. Something like this. Yeah. Like that position or something. Uh huh. Her arm because, is here ish. Oh, wow. Here. Or no. I'm like thinking of this like past messiness. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. So I, I see this happening, but then I see this happening. Ta-da! Pretend I'm holding an umbrella right here. Are you being like the model? Yeah, just tell me if I need to like move. What is your process as an artist? Brainstorm, a lot of brainstorm. Kind of just picking something that means something to me or like something that has something meaningful, like some kind of value to me or to someone that I love. And then that's kind of where my art comes from. That's actually so cool. Did it you turn out like you proud. Did it turn out like you envisioned? I like it. All right, I went up to my knees for this one. Come to get it. Dude, nice job. Total high five worth. Excellent, Woo. rock throw. That one's gonna be the, the one that does it. 
Let's see it. Nice job! Told you.